Today we're going to take a closer look at this compact, powerful 4,000 watt plus mini amplifier. Let's find out more about it. Our friends over at DS18 sent this FRP 3.5K in blue. This is a mini full range 3,500 watt amplifier. Let's find out what's in the box. First up, we'll see the owner's manual, which goes over all the features and specs in detail. We'll get to some of those in a little bit. Let's find out what else is in the box. Of course, we have the base remote cable here, which plugs into the included base remote. We'll show you here in a minute. We get a blingy reflective DS18 sticker as well as a lanyard, so you can show off your pride to your favorite brand. And then we have a couple of what the hex wrenches and some mounting screws. In addition, we have the base remote cable. This one is metal encased. It does have a clip light, uh, power light, and it has a really nice potentiometer, which I will show here. Turns very smoothly. I don't talk about this enough, but based on one of the previous amps I tested, I didn't like how it worked, but I do like this one. DS18 also offers an enhanced base remote. It's available on their website for an extra 60 bucks. Includes a voltmeter, as well as temperature display. This enhanced bass remote works with all DS18 amplifiers. Public service announcement, do not eat the silica gel, but put it into your toolbox. Here is the DS18 FRP 3.5K in blue. Wow. As you can see oh, here, very nice finish. Yeah. Like the look of this, check their website where you can see all the features and specs, currently $349.99. They're available in the anodized blue as well as the anodized red, or if you prefer a more subtle look, also a gray finish. This mini amp is a full bridge design, full range, 3,500 watts, and according to the ratings, at four ohms, 1,000 watts, two ohms, 2,000, one ohm, 3,500, and they require a 300 amp external fuse as well. Let's take a look at some of the features here on one side of the amp. At the top left, we have the remote connection, for the remote base cable going to the base knob, we have input gain 400 millivolts to 3.6 volts, high pass filter from 10 hertz to 2 kilohertz, also low pass filter from 20 kilohertz down to 40 hertz, Tiffany style or panel mount RCA jacks, also a base boost variable from 0 to 12 dB at 50 hertz. A little bit further down the ant, we have an active cooling fan, which varies based on temperature. Also, we have speaker output, which is 4 gauge, and we have one ohm minimum, minimum. Whoops, they made a mistake, but it is gonna be fixed in upcoming models. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. The amp also has the metal potentiometers with the clicky detents. I'll give you some examples here of what it sounds like. On the opposite end, we have power and ground. These are oversized zero gauge. Also, we have 12 gauge in the center for remote. Even though this amp is small, just remember, 3,500 watts needs a lot of juice, so make sure you can provide it the electrical that is needed. On the top of the amplifier, we have three different LEDs, one for power, one for clipping, one for protect. As far as dimensions go, 10.2 inches on the long side, that is from terminals to terminal. 5.5 inches for the width, 2.4 inches for the height. As a comparison on the size, this Audio Pipe 1500 watt Class D amplifier from a few years ago compared to the 3500 watt DS18, quite a difference there in size. I'm also gonna hold it in my hand here so you can see how tiny this little amp is. Can it really do its power? All right, let's power up the DS18. Okay, now we have the amp powered up. I'm gonna show you a quick overview here of the lithium bank I have it connected to. 320 amp hours of Yenlong excess power cells, LTOs. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the connections. Here we have the DS18 wired up with dual one alt inputs through these uh, adapters. And also, since this has four gauge coming out, we're going out four gauge into these distribution blocks and then splitting it off into eight gauge going into the dyno. So let's fire this thing up. Now we have the DS18 FRP 3.5K hooked up to the dyno. Let's try four ohms. It's rated a thousand watts. We're gonna try a 40 hertz tone first. Let's see what we get here. Certified to 1% distortion, 1029 watts, 14.56. Let's reset the dyno here for the uncertified mode, which will take the amplifier up to the clipping point. Again, a 40 hertz track. 
And there you go, over 1200, 1227, 14 and a half volts. Gonna reset the dyno once again here for the dynamic track. Send the pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier. Here you can see 1151 at 14.52. I think that number is gonna stick. Yeah, it is. All right, let's switch over to the two ohm mode. Rate of 2000 watts at 14.4. We'll try 40 hertz here first. Certified to 1% distortion. And we're a little bit shy here, 1820 at 14.48. It's rate of 2000 watts. But remember, this is a full range amplifier and a lot of times full range amps are rated at one kilohertz. Let's try it uncertified to clipping, see if we can get that 2000. And yeah, we get it easily. 2245 at 14.38. Then we'll reset the dyno here for the dynamic run. Sending that pulse tone into the amplifier. Here we go, well over 2000 watts. Right at 2300, 2299 at 14.36. Now we're gonna switch it up a little bit here and try the one kilohertz track because again, this is a full range amp. So let's try it two ohms certified to 1% distortion at one kilohertz. And here you go, 2104 at 14.42. So it does meet its rated power at one kilohertz. Now let's set it to one ohm where it's rated 3,500 watts at 14.4 volts. We're gonna try the 40 hertz test here first. Here we go. 1% distortion, oh, 2901. So we're about 600 watts shy here, certified at 14.43. But what about uncertified up to clipping? I mean, the manual doesn't say to 1% distortion. So if it makes it up to clipping, I say it passes and yeah, it does. 3512, 14.27. You're not gonna hear 1% distortion on your subs anyway. Dynamic power here, again, send the pulse tone into the amp, and here you can see well over 4,000 watts, 4264, 40 hertz at 14 volts. Once again, this amp is full range, so we're gonna try the one kilohertz track here at one ohm. Let's see what we can get here. Certified, 1% distortion, one kilohertz. Can we get 3,000, 3,500? Yes, we get 3,900, 3,921, 14.28. Reset the dyno here for the uncertified test. See if we can bust 4,000 watts. Here it goes. One kilohertz tone. There you go, 4,021 watts. 14.2 from this tiny amplifier. Next up, we'll try the dynamic test here, and this simulates the IHF202 test. And here you can see we're right at 4,3896, 14.41. Wow. Now let's move on to the results here. As you can see at 40 Hertz, came up a little bit shy at two ohms and one ohm certified. All the other tests look great. Then we ran the one kilohertz test and it exceeded, far exceeded everything here for all the tests, four ohms, two ohms, and one ohm. Again, it's likely that DS18 rated this for one kilohertz since it is a full range amp. That means it exceeded its ratings by quite a bit. But here we go. Let's take a look at the internals. Here is this mini 3,500 watt amplifier. We do a fly over here and we'll take a closer look here at the components inside there. You can see the transformers, also the capacitors, and you can see the choke there at the back. Now, speaking of capacitors, 1,500 microfarad, 120 volts here for the rails and for the input filtering, 4,700 microfarad, 35 volt. These are odd caps. Now let's find out, do it bump dough using the quad box. Let's try this 3,500 watt amp with four 12s.
Yeah, it's really hard to portray sound here in these videos if you don't have headphones on, but the amp was powering these subs to their limits. Now let's check out the amp under the thermal imaging here from the FLIR. I don't know if you can see the temperature there, but it's in the low 90s. Even after basing hard for about an hour or so, did not get overheated, so very good overall. Let's move on to the pros and cons. Talk about the things I like, things that could be better. Things I like, small footprint, Tiffany or panel mount RCAs. Has a variable speed fan to help keep it cool. Three color choices. Base remote is included, which does have a clip light. High quality potentiometers that click into place. And it is full range compatible. If you want to run full range with 3,500 watts, go for it. Things that could be better, it does require a 300 amp external fuse. And yes, even though the amp is small, it takes a lot of current to make this thing run at one ohm. So make sure you have that. The low pass filter goes from 20 kilohertz down to 40 hertz and has a finite number of clicks. So a lot of movement in a short amount of distance there. The voltage base remote is extra if you want one that shows the voltage. Also, the 1 ohm certified output and 2 ohm certified output at 40 hertz fell a little bit shy of rated. And although you probably never hear it, the low pass crossover even set at 40 hertz. I was still hearing some vocals, but powering your subwoofers, you probably won't hear that, but it is something I noticed. So overall here for the price, performance, and size of this mini 3500 watt amplifier, I think you'd be happy with it. So thank you guys always for watching. Till next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here. This mini full bridge amplifier is not designed for loads under one ohm. So we decided to run 1.33 just to see what it would do. And here you go, certified at 40 Hertz, 2543, right at 14.44. Then we tried uncertified up to the clipping point, again, using the 40 Hertz tracks so for simulating subwoofers. Very close to 3000 watts, 2914, 14.37. And then finally, we will try the dynamic run here with a pulse tone you can see here well over 3,000, almost 3,500, 34, 33 at 14.11. Big D, I'm out.